This is an overview video of Backup Exec 2012. We're now looking at the home screen. You can see things have changed a lot since the previous version. First we have the various different ways we can customize the screen. You can add or uncheck various different options. You can go back to the default layout with just a click of that button. Under Backup and Restore, we have lots of different options that are new here. We can sort and filter for different views if you have a lot of different backups going on. You can filter according to jobs completed, etc. You can go also go in and create groups for backups as well. And those groups can be various different options. And there's lots of different ways to back up now. You can back up to disk, back up to disk and then duplicate to disk cartridge or backup tape. You can back up to disk and then convert to virtual machine. Back up to disk and simultaneously convert to virtual machine. And then you can back up to disk and then archive or create a synthetic backup, which is a new option. Under this uh, backup button, you have the same options we just discussed. And the reason that I don't have this option gets grayed out is because I do not have a tape or a tape library installed. You can do a one-time backup instead of doing a scheduled backup. Just click there, get the one-time backup to disk, backs up everything, or you can customize it. You can edit backups that you've either already created or you've already worked on. Got the backup calendar, you can go in and make changes. You can see if there's any kind of conflicts. You see the recurrences. And then under Restore, the Restore looks a little bit different. So you choose Files, Folders, or Volumes. You can choose File and Folder Backups or Located Through Search in case you're not sure of uh, what's out there, which is a really nice feature to have. You can add additional servers as well as uh, SharePoint Server Farm, Exchange Database Availability Groups. You can go to Linux computers or Macintosh computers. Nice clear options there. Here's where you can hold the job queue if you want. You can also delete from archive if you want to clean up some things. Under storage, this is our storage that we've got. We just have, have one disk storage at this point, but if you have multiple storages, they're right there. You can right click here, pause, disable some of the normal things that you usually see. Here's the details. Details are very nice. You can go in and change disk space, overwrite. Here's your names, whether the state it's online or offline. You can do read only operations, and then here's the path to that file. Click the back button, we're back to where we were. We can configure the storage. We can also do inventory and catalog, all one button now. Reporting is uh, very similar, just has a nice new clean look to it. You can see completed, upcoming. This is a new installation, so there's not a lot that has been done so far. You can choose the media and then different alerts. Here's our alert history. Over here in the upper left corner, we've got some new options. It's very similar to Microsoft Office look. So you can, here's where you can connect to the server or a different server. Here's your configuration settings, which used to be the tools options. So those are all here, job defaults, backup exec settings, logon accounts. You can set up new logons if you want for other administrators. There's your alert notifications, set up your email alerts. So a lot of that is very similar. Here's where your licensing is installed and additional options. Here's Semantic Online. One of the new options with backup is you can now back up to Semantics Cloud instead of just to local devices. And then here's your help and documentation and close. Uh, right now, as far as we know, it's $7 per gigabyte per transferred gigabyte per year. It looks like uh, it's a little different than just storing the gigabytes they charge for per transferred gigabyte. So those, that's the overview of Semantic Backup Exec 2012. Definitely a better look and a more responsive than the previous versions. And uh, I think it looks like this is going to be a good product.